Hello engineering students. I um, want to begin uh, this uh, part two of the lecture series. Uh, by this I mean that we are through with the, with the part one which is the as far as the course is concerned is, uh, is called significance of organic compounds that dealt with introduction to organic chemistry dealing with the uh, with the naming and the properties and also uses of of organic compounds from alkanes up to carboxylic acids i'll not go back into that one but i think uh, uh, you've got the, the you've got the notes and you also got this uh, video series that will guide you through uh, this session so now i want to look at uh, the first one of this uh, part two which is on uh, proteins uh, so um, most of what uh, you uh, you need to know is in the uh, lecture notes and therefore what we'll be covering in the videos is not uh, new material but just to clarify some things that uh, that may not be very clear regarding the notes but but your uh, co-reference material is is the lecture notes yeah so proteins uh, uh, you know uh, even before um, uh, you probably you went to prim uh, or maybe primary school or whatever I don't know at what level you introduced to the word proteins proteins is, is related to a balanced diet yeah um, you know um, a balanced diet is made up of what among other things proteins carbohydrates uh, fats uh, uh, vitamins uh, so, so you know about uh, proteins, you've heard about them, and therefore, um, uh, but what uh, you may not, uh, you may not have been uh, told you, there's some words which you may have heard in one or another one, proteins, uh, peptides, and also amino acids. Now, in this course, you're going to see that those three uh, actually, um, uh, related We're talking about amino acids which you're going to hear you're going to hear some some words like peptides like uh like you're going to hear um uh like which one uh okay we'll get to those ones in the in the course let me not preempt uh, some of those terminology but you're going to hear words like uh, uh peptides uh, uh dipeptide oh, all those kind of things you're going to hear those words let me not go into those uh, details and then uh, and then you're going to hear, um, and then you get to get to the proteins. But in a nutshell, yeah, so that you can see, uh, so that you can see the the link. Uh, the basic building blocks of of proteins are things which you're going to call amino acids. And then you're going to see amino acids they come together to form uh, peptides, yeah, yeah. And then peptides when they are going to be big beyond a certain level, then they're going to form what? Uh, they're going to be these things which are going to be calling uh, proteins yeah so so proteins uh, is the, they're made up of repeating units of different amino acids which are going to which are going to be seen here uh, so up to a certain level maybe 50 probably 100 units of of, uh, of amino acids are going to be called what uh, are going to be called uh, peptides you are going to see the the bond joining one amino acid to another one is called is called a peptide bond yeah it's called a peptide bond so so up to a certain uh, number of peptide bonds there that will be called uh, something to call uh, a polypeptide beyond a certain uh, pept polypeptide then it will be called a protein proteins are very large they're made up of tens of thousands of of amino acids yeah so those are the terminologies uh, that you need to know. So uh, on the body, I believe, yeah, it's clear that um, uh, I've just uh, tried to to show what you mean by by amino acids. Um, this part two uh, of the course is building up on on what you learned about uh, part one of the course, yeah. So uh, so in part one, we we saw that that amines, amine group 
is of less priority than a, than a carboxylic acid. And then when an, when an amine group is a substituent on a carboxylic acid, then the name amine changed to an amino. So in this case, you've got a, a structure here which has got uh, uh, this group here. It is an, uh, it's an amine, functional group. And this one which I'm putting here, which I put in, uh, the next one is a carboxylic acid. So this is the parent uh, carboxylic acid. It means that you're going to start numbering from one, two, three, four, up to the end of the chain. And therefore, this amine uh, group will now change to an amino uh, functional group. So this type of compound will be called an amino carboxylic acid. But scientists have just tried to minimize, it's not than calling it amino carboxylic acid, they're just calling it amino acid. But you know there's a difference between the carboxylic acid and the amino acids like, like what? Like uh, hydrochloric acid, uh, sulfuric acid, nitric acid, yeah? So in this case, if you're talking about amino acid, you're talking about, uh, in your mind you should know, we're dealing with amino carboxylic acids. So when there is the carboxylic acid group, which is the C double bond O for the carbonyl group and then OH, that's the carbon bond. So you start numbering from there. In this case, this structure has got an amino group on carbon number four. So there's no other functional group. So it's going to be called four amino, one, two, three, four, five, five, uh, five uh, uh, carbons. So it is a four amino pentanoic acid. Are we together? Now, now in this case, uh, uh, we can put so many uh, structures com containing an amine group and a carboxylic acid. But uh, we'll be focusing uh, mostly in this course uh, on the amino carboxylic acids which are found in nature. Uh, mammals, anything, yeah? Uh, anything that contains uh, proteins, yeah? So the so the the ones which are found in biological systems have got an amino group on the second carbon relative to the the carboxylic acid. So so if if the uh, okay the carbon containing the carboxylic acid, if you're going to cut number it one, then the amino group is on carbon number two. So these are called two amino carboxylic acids in nature. So it means that in this case, there is an R group. It means it can be an alkyl group or any other thing that is attached. So you're going to be looking at carboxylic acids with this general formula. This is the general formula of the carboxylic, I mean of the amino carboxylic acids that you're going to be looking at. You're going to be called two amino carboxylic acids. But um, uh, before the IUPAC, uh, nomenclature came um, uh, and this is why I'm going to see that um, uh, that that amino carboxylic acids or amino acids as you're going to be calling them um, uh, their traditional names are so embedded because of uh, the uh, uh, are so embedded in day-to-day -day life that that the uh, scientists or the chemists have seen it's not appropriate to come up with uh, to try to enforce the like the like the what like the IUPAC nomenclature on the normal person. So they have just decided, okay, let us stick with the normal names and and then um, uh, we see how and life will continue. Yeah. So for amino carboxylic acids. Uh, what the scientists or the biologists they know is the common name and not the IUPAC name. So you're going to come up with some of those names. So in this case, the, these two amino carboxylic acids, you're going to see there is a numbering which was there before the IUPAC nomenclature came. And that is, for example, as far as IUPAC nomenclature is concerned, the carbon containing the carboxylic, the, the, the carboxylic acid carbon is number one and this number two. But in the old system before the IUPAC nomenclature came, uh, the carbon containing the uh, next, okay, the carbon 
next to the main functional group is called the alpha carbon atom. It's called what? Alpha carbon atom. Okay? So, for example, in this case, in this one for amino pentanoic acid, this will be called the alpha carbon beta, and this is called, going to be called what? The gamma. Uh, so this will be called what? This will be called uh, a gamma uh, amino, amino acid, yeah? You understand? Gamma, it means that, that the functional group, the amino group is on the gamma carbon. This is the old, or this is the standard uh, way of, of naming carboxylic acids. But what we want to say is that, that the carboxylic acids that are found in nature, they are called alpha, they are called what? Alpha amino acids. Alpha amino acids. By amino acids, you are saying it is alpha amino carboxylic acids. Are we together? Alpha amino carboxylic acids. Good. So, so you are going to hear that word alpha. Alpha means it is the carbon next to the main functional group with the carboxylic acid, yeah? And not the, uh, the carboxylic acid itself, yeah? So the carbon next to it contains an amino group that will be called an alpha amino acid. All right? Now, there are some things that, um, uh, that have stood the test of time, and that is the standard presentation of, of carboxylic acids. Uh, no, or, I mean of, of amino acids. Um, when they are presented, um, for example, if you are going to be forming uh, proteins, it means that you are going to be joining uh, one amino acid and then you join to another one through something which you call a peptide bond. Yeah, A peptide bond is, is, the, is the what? Is the covalent bond between one carboxylic between one amino acid and the next? The peptide bond is the is the covalent bond between one one uh, amino acid and the next. So now, um, uh, depending on uh, how you join one amino acid to the next, you're going to get totally different compound. For example, if this is one amino acid and then you're going to join the the next one here you're going to get a different arrangement. But if I put the second uh, amino acid here, you're also going to get a different, a different arrangement, yeah? You're going to get a different, a different, uh, something which you call dipeptide, yeah? You're going to get a different, uh, something called a peptide, yeah? Let, let me use the word peptide. A peptide is, a, is, a, is, a, is a combination of, of two amino acids. So, to try to avoid that any ambiguity, um, uh, uh, amino acids uh, are usually drawn in a standard manner. Yeah, and uh, so so in my case, you can see I've got my my right hand and I've got my my left hand. So for the amino acid that you are going to be to be drawing as the first amino acid, you must ensure that 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 the amino group or the NH2 group uh, is drawn on the, uh, the the amino group and the carboxylic acid they are all put on the on the horizontal axis you understand not on the vertical horizontal axis you understand and then the amino group is is put on the left you understand it is put on the left hand of the horizontal axis and the carboxylic acid is put on the right is put on on the right are we together so in this case this is the standard way of, of presentation of of an amino acid this the horizontal axis and then the amino group is drawn on the left and the carboxylic acid is drawn on the right. so that means that if you are going to be forming peptides to, to form proteins they are going to be forming on the right. That's why you are going to be joining the groups on the, on the right. Yeah? And not on the left. Yeah? So the group on the left will not change. So if you are going to be adding another group, it will be joined on the, on the right. So the, the building up or the, 
the second amino acid it will be joined on the right as opposed to on the left. So this is the standard presentation of, of amino acids. Okay. Now, now from here I'll be able to okay, so so in this case we are saying that, that amino acids are known by by the common names as opposed to the IUPAC nomenclature. So so I'm going to be coming up with, with these names and I think uh, I've just tried to to show a few. Um, are you seeing a similarity here? Can you see here? This is the NH2 on the left, horizontal. This is the carboxylic acid. Now there's something which I need to note here. You're going to be seeing two presentations of the carboxylic acid. It can be shown as COOH or in this case it can be shown as C carbonyl group O O H. This one you're talking about the same presentation. So it can be shown as COOH or it can be shown as uh, C carbonyl O H. I hope you, it will be clear that that when you are seeing like this one, uh, it will be clear that that this is the same presentation as here. How is it the same? What you know is this: carbon forms four bonds. Carbon forms four bonds. So, so if I've got this carbon and I've already got in, uh, one uh, one bond here, then carbon it will be left with with uh, with three bonds. Yeah, Do you understand? And then here I've got an oxygen and hydrogen. So if I'm going to put an OH here, yeah, yeah, for the for the OH, this will tell me that that for this oxygen that is remaining, and and to make it four bonds, I'm going to remove this one and then I put a double bond here to put it to put an oxygen here. So the, the carbon is going to eventually going to have one, two, three, four bonds. Oxygen is going to have two bonds. This oxygen is going to have two bonds. Yeah. So it's clear when you show it as COOH, it is the same as showing C carbonyl group OOH. Is that clear? Very well. So, so in this case, uh, what you are going to see is this: is that in this standard presentation here, we are going to say that that the R R for an alkyl group, uh, that R can also be a hydrogen. Yeah. So in this case, it's just being shown here. The R group here is being shown as hydrogen. So we're going to get uh, uh, an amino acid. Uh, okay, there's, there's something which I need to say. Um, what we've avoided so far with uh, with IUPAC nomenclature has been what? Has been uh, cramming. But, but in this case, even to avoid cramming, if there will be questions dealing with, uh, with amino acids, and uh, probably with uh, with proteins of which I'm going to be showing uh, the kind of things that are normally examinable regarding um, amino acids. You're going to be given uh, the structure of amino acids in an appendix. Yeah. So you're not going to be at your level. You're not going to be expected to do what to memorize uh, both the structure and the something called the three-letter notation for the for the amino acids. It's going to be a relief, yeah? So you, you're going to see there are 20 amino acids that are found in, in the biological systems. 20 amino acids, which are going to be giving the common names. But, but this one, what, you're, uh, what it's telling you is that, is that um, uh, what can you see here? The NH2 remains the same. The NH2 in this structure here, there's a hydrogen, there's a hydrogen, there's a hydrogen. There's a carboxylic acid, there's a carboxylic acid, there's a carboxylic acid. So what is changing is, is just this, this group here, this group here, one group here. You're going to see, except for one of the amino acids, which you're going to be calling proline, the rest of the amino acids are only going to be changing with, with this R group here. Yeah? R group will be the only one which will be changing. So for the, for the... 19 amino acids, it's only the R group to be changing. You're going to see, for this one which you're going to be calling proline the, the 20th amino acid, there will be a way in which one of the hydrogens of the, of the amyl group and, uh, and one of this carbon here are going to be joined in form of a ring. Yeah? Yeah. 
So there will be a, a relationship between one of the amino group and this carbon here. They're going to be part of the ring. And that one is just given a, a simple name of, of proline, uh, proline, but you're going to see the, the structure for that. So, so for, for now, you're going to see there is glycine, there is this one called serine, there's this one called anal, uh, alanine. So you're going to pause a bit, uh, I've talked of, uh, for about 20 minutes, and then I'm going to give some of those uh, structures for the for the amino acids and then there will be the the the, the long name of which is what you're going to be calling this uh, uh, full name and then you're going to see the three letter notation which is what is used for the presentation of of amino acids when they are when they are joined together to form uh, peptides and and eventually the protein so i hope you really enjoyed this uh, first part of this uh, uh, lecture on on amino acids. So we'll just take a break and then we'll continue shortly after this. Okay.